Hey friend, Brandon here. If you're trying to find some actual tips and features to find out how to better use your Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra or Galaxy S22 or S22 Plus, and maybe you've watched a few videos already and really haven't learned anything new yet, well, hopefully this ultimate tips and tricks video will solve that problem for you. There are 58 different tips, so there are some chapters you can check out. I'm gonna move fast to save you some time, but feel free to pause or use the slower playback option to keep up. Of course, if there are some tips that you know and love that I didn't cover, make sure to leave a comment down below to help each other out. Also, if you're planning on picking up the Samsung Galaxy S22, S22 Plus, or S22 Ultra, there are links down below in the description that often have a deal attached to it. So go ahead and click on it and check out what's available. This tip is one of the first things I do whenever I get a new Android phone, and it's a game changer. And it may seem a little scary at first, but it isn't. It's like supercharging your Android phone. First, swipe down from the top, click on the gear icon, scroll all the way down to the bottom until you see About Phone. Click on About Phone, go to Software Information, and then over here you'll see Build Number. Tap on this until you get to this next screen. It'll ask for your pin. You'll have to type in your PIN number, not my PIN number. I don't know what your PIN number is. It's whatever you chose when you set up your phone. And it'll say down here that developer mode has been turned on. Go ahead and tap back and then back again. And then scroll all the way down and you'll see this option that says developer options. Tap on that. And then what you'll want to do is go all the way down to the part that talks about animations. It says Windows Animation Scale, Transition Animation Scale, and Animator Duration Scale. Here's a little example of the animation scale. What you can do is you can tap on it and change it to 0.5. See how much faster that looks? It makes your phone feel extra snappy. Now if you want to, you can turn off the animations all together, but you lose some of that smoothness in the transitions. It's just a kind of a hard transition to things. I personally prefer 0.5x, and I know some of you might be concerned about this, but it will not affect your battery life. And if you don't really understand the other settings in here, I really wouldn't mess with them. With the new Samsung Galaxy S22 lineup, you have the ability to have a high refresh rate of 120 hertz, which can make everything look a lot smoother when you're scrolling around. But there are some pros and cons to it. First, let's find out where the settings are for it. Swipe down from the top and click on the gear icon. Go to display and then you'll see this right here, motion smoothness. Here you can change between adaptive or standard. If you have adaptive, you can have that really smooth experience, but if you don't really notice the difference in smoothness between 60 hertz and going up to 120 hertz, if you go to 60 hertz, you can actually extend the battery life of your phone. Here's a bonus tip. If you want to, you can extend your battery life even more by changing the resolution of your screen. So you'll have better battery life if you go to FHD plus compared to QHD plus. So not everyone knows this, but if you have an AMOLED or OLED OLED screen like on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, having a theme that has more pixels on your screen that are pitch black will actually use less of your battery. Here's a way that you can easily enable this on most areas on your phone. We'll go to the settings, go to display, and simply go to dark mode. Right there you can see everything is darker and because of that it uses less of your battery. Now you've probably done this before. You're laying in bed and you go to check out your phone and even though your display brightness is set all the way to the lowest settings, it still feels like it's blindingly bright. Or maybe you go outside and it's not bright enough. Well, there's a solution to that. So let's see how dark we can get it. That's pretty dark. You probably can't see anything on the camera, but you can actually make it go even darker by tapping this little icon right here and you can edit buttons. When you click on that, you can go to extra dim Click that and drag it down. And now what you can do is just tap on it. It has a little extra step of darkness or dimness that's added to it. So, I mean, I honestly can't see anything right in front of me. It's so dark. Let's turn that off. You can see it gives an extra boost there. Now, if you want to go on the other end of the spectrum and you need it to go even brighter, let's go to the settings, go to that display right there. And then you can go for this option right here. It says extra brightness. So I can even see it just got it boosted even more. My goodness, that actually kind of hurts a little bit, but that's like really good, especially if you have direct sunlight. Now, if you're the type that typically keeps your smartphone for more than three years, it's especially important for you to protect and extend the lifespan of your battery. And there's a really neat feature that Samsung Galaxy S22 phones have that allow you to do that. So what you'll do is you'll go to your settings, just click on the search feature. It's easier that way and type in protect battery. There it is and it'll flash right here and just tap on that. What this ends up doing is it limits the charge on your battery to only 85%. There's an interesting thing about lithium ion batteries, which is in your phone. If you charge it to 100% and drain it all the way down to 0%, it can actually be really bad for the overall lifespan of your battery. So having it only go to 85% and hopefully you don't drain it all the way to zero can really help that out. So hopefully you can get a heck of a lot more life out of your phone before you have to buy a new one. Now, if you or a friend ends up in a pinch and you need to 
little extra battery for their phone, or maybe it's your earbuds. The Samsung Galaxy S22 lineup has a really cool battery share feature where you can actually wirelessly charge another device using your phone. To enable this, go to your menu and swipe down two times. Up here, you'll have the dot, dot, dots and click on edit buttons. You'll see this option somewhere that says wireless power share. So tap, hold and drag, and then just hit done. Now you can tap on this and there it is, it's wirelessly charging. Now one of the greatest things to be added to Android 12 is universal search. It's easily found in the app drawer. So you just go to the app drawer and you have the search bar right here. You can just start typing and it'll search for everything in your phone, including apps, contacts, app content, and more. On Samsung phones, there's always an interesting point of redundancy that I always make sure to fix. Here's what it looks like. If you swipe up, you get your app drawer. If you swipe down, you get your app drawer. That doesn't make sense. So let's fix that. All you have to do is hold down on your home screen and then go to settings. And then what you're able to do is click on swipe down for notification panel. Now go to your home screen and now you can do this. Oh, that just makes way more sense. You can have more options and reach your settings just by swiping down on the screen. Notifications are one of the strings of Android, but not many know that you can customize it. So let's go to your settings and then go to notifications. You'll see this option all the way at the bottom it says advanced settings. Click on that and you can change a variety of different things. You can show the battery percentage up here, which is really convenient. I love that. You can change how many notifications show up so you can see every single notification so it can fill up the whole thing or just the three mo most recent ones. Or you can just say the number of notifications so it can have a number there instead. I really like that you can kind of clean it up so you're not just bombarded with a ton of icons up there. Now, I bet you've had this annoying thing happen to you before. You get a notification and then you accidentally swipe away and you're like, ah, what was that notification about? And what app was that for? And how do I get it back? There's a great solution to it that I wish was available on every single phone because it's a game changer. Go to your settings and then click on notifications. Go all the way down to advanced settings. Click on notification history and turn it on. Now, if you get a notification and accidentally swipe it away, all you have to do is go to your settings again and click on notifications and then go all the way down here click on advanced settings and go to notification history. And you can see that's a notification that I just sent to myself and accidentally swiped away. This tip is really kind of awesome because it allows you to gain tons of control of where the content you're consuming ends up. So let's say we're looking at this YouTube video that I'm playing here. And uh, if you go over here, maybe you don't want it in that pop-up view, but maybe if you go over here, maybe it's music or something else, you can actually just click on this down care option and you see this option for media output. Now you can change it to this phone but if you have a TV or earbuds you can choose between all those different ones that are connected or available to your phone and then you'll also see this option for music share so you can click on that so if you have something like a Bluetooth speaker you can connect to that or if you have another friend who has Galaxy Buds and you also have Galaxy Buds you can both listen to whatever's playing back on your phone at the same time pretty cool. One thing that Android has that iPhones still don't have is an always on display where you can see some information on your screen even when you're not using the phone. That's great for being able to see what time it is, a bit about your notifications, and being able to identify what song might be playing around you at the time. Go to your settings, just type in in the search always on display, and you can go in here and just tap on that. You can do tap to show, show always, show as scheduled, or show for new notifications. So there's a bunch of different options that are available to you depending on your preference. You can also have your clock show up there and show music information. So if a song is playing, it'll actually let me know what song is playing around me. When I turn it off, it'll still display information for me at all times, like the time. If you're like me, you may feel like the default text and zoom level on a phone isn't quite your taste, and you wanna either see more information on your screen or make it bigger so it's easier to read. Go to your settings, go to display, and you can go all the way over here and see font size and style so you can change it so it's a little bit smaller or bigger depending on your preferences I'll keep it at the default amount for this video and you can even change the font style if you want to you can also change the screen zoom so if you like to fill things up a little bit more you can do that way or a little bit smaller again we'll keep it at the default but I do really like a smaller zoom and smaller text size because I can see a whole bunch more, especially on this really big display. Now here's one tip that most don't know about, but it makes so much sense. If you go to your messages, open up a text message, you can actually pinch to zoom in your own 
messages. So if you need a little bit bigger, you can totally do that. I didn't know this until this year. This is huge. If you're using Google Duo for video calls, which is a great cross-platform video call option, you gain some really great features that can make video calls convenient on the Samsung Galaxy S22 series devices. So open up Google Duo. I'll just start this group call right here. So one of the things that you can do is click on this icon right here. You can change the background. So if you want to be blurred, you can totally do that if you want. You can also do something called auto framing. So I'll turn that on. And so when I move around, it'll follow me. So it's kind of like the iPad Pro. And then you have a mic mode. So there's a standard mode, and then you have your voice focus, which can kind of focus and emphasize more of your voice over everything else. So it's a little bit of a noise cancellation around you. And then there's an option for all sound, which allows everything. So if you want some of the ambiance, and maybe it's a group of people that are around you, and you want to be able to talk and hear everyone, that's a good option. Now, one thing I've appreciated over the past few years are watch parties. On the Samsung Galaxy S22 series devices, you have the ability to share your screen and watch YouTube videos together and other documents on Google Duo. Tap on the screen in Google Duo, hit the dot, 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 go all the way to live sharing, and you'll have all these different options to choose from. Let's choose YouTube. Let's say start recording or casting with Duo. Start now. And then we have this right here. So I can just hit play, and there's this little floating icon here. So I'll tap on that and say start sharing screen. And now, on my other phone, you can see what I'm watching. A great thing added to Android 12 is greater customization of its picture-in-picture -picture feature while playing something like YouTube. So let's go to YouTube. We'll play this video and go into picture-in-picture -picture mode by going home. And this is what we're usually able to do on the earlier versions of Android. But with this, you can actually pinch to zoom and get even smaller if you want to, or even bigger, which is really nice, and move it around. This is awesome, and then you can swipe down when you want to get rid of it. Now, it's so crazy that so many people don't know about this, but the Samsung Galaxy S22 lineup and other Galaxy devices allow you to watch live TV from a variety of major networks. You see, they have two apps installed. I don't know why there are two, because it's a little bit redundant, and it's the same app. You have one that's called Samsung Free right here that allows you to look through hundreds and hundreds of live channels, and you can also search for Samsung TV Plus. It's the same exact app. I don't know why it has a different uh, setup here. And you have on-demand video, which is really cool. Just free TV, just built into your phone. How crazy is that? You know what else is also crazy? This next tip that I stumbled upon, which is a way to diversify and give you the opportunity to invest in areas that have traditionally only been available to the ultra-rich and highly connected. Masterworks is a company that's changing the game by allowing you to invest in physical art from Banksy, Andy Warhol, Picasso, and so many more. Picasso, that's nuts. I've personally looked into Masterworks as I've looked into other investment opportunities outside of stock. And then add in the fact that not everyone's super thrilled about NFTs, I thought, why can't I invest in tangible art like the ultra rich? You see, the total wealth held in art is estimated to be $1.7 trillion, and contemporary art price appreciation returns have outpaced the S&P 500 by 164% from 1995 to 2021. That's insane, and I wanted to take part in that. Well, first, I'm not ultra rich, and even Daniel Radcliffe wasn't allowed to buy the art that he wanted because he wasn't part of the in crowd. But Masterworks is the only platform that takes billionaire art collectors head on by democratizing the industry and giving people like you and me access to exclusive investments of fine art that they have securitized with the SEC. So how does it all work? First, you visit their website, create an account, browse their artwork, and invest in any of their current offerings. From there, you hold on to your shares until Masterworks sells the art or sell your shares on their secondary market. In 2020, investors received a 32% net return for the sale of Banksy's Mona Lisa, which was two times better than the S&P. 500. And in 2021, they sold a George condo that resulted in a return of 31% net of fees. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. Now, Masterworks usually has a waitlist, but you can gain priority access by clicking my link in the description. Join the community and invest in art today. Does this annoy you about your phone? You lay down and then your phone starts flipping around its orientation between portrait and landscape, which is just annoying. And now when you want to actually change your display's orientation, you have to go swipe down to the menu, go to your quick toggles, and then toggle it again. That's a bunch of steps and it's annoying. There's an easier way to do this. First, you'll want to go to your settings and actually make sure that your auto rotate is turned off. So if you have it in portrait mode, you can rotate it to landscape and you'll have this icon that pops up in the corner. Just tap on it and it'll manually change the orientation. And to go back to portrait mode, all you have to do is rotate it again and tap on the icon and there you go. Here's a tip that I'm surprised a lot of people don't know about, but it's so convenient on an Android phone and it's a fast app switcher that will switch between the last used app. All you have to do is go into an app and just double tap and it'll swap 
between your previous app. And if you have gestures enabled, all you have to do is swipe. And it'll go through actually all the cards in the order that they're in. I think this is even better. By default, Samsung phones still come with an older button navigation layout and in a different orientation than other Android phones. If you want to customize that or change the button layout to gestures, you can easily do that. Go to your settings, click on display, scroll all the way down to the bottom to navigation bar. And then here you can change the order of the buttons. I like the more traditional route. Going back is left. That makes more sense to me. Or you can go to gestures, which is also something that I prefer. And you just swipe up to go to your home screen. Have you ever opened up an app and maybe you're writing a note or editing a document and then you flip over to another app to check on something and then you go back to the first app and then uh, you notice that it closed down and it has to restart and you lose your spot. That's so annoying. It's a thing that happens to conserve how much RAM your phone is using and it applies to most things on your phone. But with this tip, you can actually specifically choose to have a specific app on your Samsung phone prioritize so it doesn't close down and restart. So let's pick an app. Let's go to like YouTube or something like that and then go to the overview screen and you have this icon here. You can tap on that and click on keep open. And you have this little lock here. It says one app kept open for quick launching. That means that it's always going to be active and available for you to access. And if you want to get rid of that, go over here and just tap on the icon and now it's back to normal. So there's this really neat feature that's built into the Samsung Galaxy S22 that allows you to utilize the storage on your phone for additional amounts of RAM. This means that fewer apps will automatically close on you when it starts maxing out on RAM because you can functionally have more RAM. So go to your settings, gear icon, and then just tap on this right here and type in RAM plus. Click on that. And this is also where you can clear your RAM, but this is the more interesting part. Here at the bottom, you have the option to choose how much RAM plus that you have. So you can go all the way up to eight gigabytes. So that's a lot of RAM. This is a very, very simple tip that I'm surprised that a lot of people don't know about on Android. Normally when you go to your notification shade, you have to swipe down and then swipe down again. And so that's two steps to get to all these quick settings and everything else. All you have to do instead of doing that twice is use two fingers at the same time and go straight to it. So the difference between one finger, two fingers. If you're using the gesture navigation option on a Samsung device, you may be wondering how you can access the Google Assistant. Usually when you swipe up from the middle, you get Samsung Pay, and maybe that's not actually what you want. Well, it's as simple as swiping up from the corners, and there you go. Your Google Assistant is still there, and it's way better than Bixby, let's be honest. With phone screens being so big now, it can be really quite difficult to reach everything on the screen, especially the top right here. You kind of have to use two hands for all of that. Well, there's a great one-handed mode that you can enable that can really help with this. Go to your settings and just type in one handed mode, just tap on that, and you can just enable it right here. And so there's a couple ways that you can enable it. If you have the button, you can double tap the home button, but if you have gestures enabled, you just swipe down in the center of the bottom edge of the screen. So let's try it. All you have to do is swipe down from the middle, and there you go. It's one handed mode. You can change where it is, and you can double tap out here to exit out of it, a whole bunch of different options there. And it's really nice. One of the greatest things about Android phones, especially on something like the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra with its big screen is its multitasking abilities. So maybe you're looking at something like a recipe and you're wanting to take notes, but swiping between both of them is a little bit frustrating. Well, all you have to do is go to the overview screen click on the icon and open in split screen view. Then it'll ask what other apps that you want to open in split screen. So for this bottom portion, so we have the notes app that I was just looking at. And so I have this up here that I can look at and I can just type in things right here or even copy and paste it here. And if you need to close it, all I have to do is swipe down to go to that one or swipe up to go to your notes. Have you ever used the old Facebook chat heads where you had a floating bubble on your screen and then you can move it around and quickly access that chat? Well, if you're familiar with that and you wondered, hmm, why can't I do that with apps? Well, you can do that on a Samsung phone and it's even better. So say I have the music app up. I just go into the app overview screen here, click on the icon, and then you can open it up in pop-up view. So it shows up in this box right here, but you can click on this little icon here and it goes into this little bubble that you can move around. And if you click on it, it expands it. This uh, icon right here will go to full screen. You can even change different settings here by tapping on the dot 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 there. You can even change 
its transparency, which is very interesting. And you can even resize it. Tap on it, double tap the top, goes into the bubble. It's right there where you need it, wherever you need it for whatever app that you wanna use. <laughs> Imagine this, maybe someone comes up to you and asks if they can borrow your phone for a call, or you wanna prevent someone from snooping through your phone, or a kid asks if they can play a game on your phone and you wanna prevent them from being able to go into other apps and see or mess with other things on your phone. Well, this feature really helps out with that. Go to your settings and search for pin window, tap on that and just enable that. So now that that's enabled, say it's a YouTube video that they're looking at, go ahead and swipe up tap on the icon and then click on pin this app. To unpin this app, swipe up and hold. So you may have some requirements there, but see right now, they can't leave the app. But if you swipe up and hold, it goes to this home screen. So in order to go back into your phone, you have to have the biometric unlock, your pin or whatever else. And then now you're back to normal. And if you're not using the gesture setting and you have the buttons, you just hold both the left and right buttons at the bottom navigation bar to unlock it and then go back into your login screen. One of the best things about a Samsung phone is the ability to customize your home screen. The last thing you want to do is put in all this work, getting it just the way that you want it, only for it to become a mess because someone change it on you. It's as easy as just tapping on your home screen, go to your settings, and then go all the way here and lock home screen layout. Now, it can't move around, it's stuck. <laughs> One of the great things that come from Android 12 is the way colors work on your phone. You can actually customize your app icons based off of the colors found on your wallpaper. So go ahead and hold down on your screen, go to wallpaper and style, and then you have this option that's here that's titled color palette. You can actually change all of these different settings here to exactly what you want. And it can apply to the icons as well, which is really cool. So this is a little bit more colorful. And look at that, the icons are a little bit different. Also, if you like customizing things and you've been wondering why my phone looks different, it's a skin from channel sponsor Dbrand. I personally have the MKB HD red icons here, but they brought back their leather skins that I can't wait to get the hold on to and their grip cases I use on all my phones. This robot camo is also really awesome. Check it out, there's a link in the description. If you happen to handle multiple social media accounts and you need to switch between those different social media accounts, the Samsung Galaxy S22 series gives you the option to have multiple accounts on one device. Just go to your settings and just type in dual messenger and you'll see that right here just enable it and so you can sign into a second account for snapchat and facebook so you have two different app icons for it both logged into a different account so when you click on that it'll ask you to install a second copy of Facebook. Awesome. Have you ever had someone come over and they ask you what your Wi-Fi network and password is? Maybe your password is some gobbledygook of characters that you couldn't remember if you tried, or it's something personal or embarrassing that you don't want to share with them. Well, there's an awesome way of sharing your Wi-Fi login info. All you have to do is go into the Wi-Fi settings, hold that down, and then click in the gear icon. And down here at the bottom, you have this option for QR code. And it has information right there just like that where they can just scan it and it's good to go. If you use an Android, I'm sure you've probably heard an iPhone user talk about how amazing AirDrop is and how they can't live without it. I get it. And for so long, I wish I had that option on an Android phone. And now you can. Well, at least between Android phones. You'll have to activate in your settings. So go to your quick settings. It's here on my second page and it's called Nearby Share. It looks like that. And it'll be enabled, so we'll turn it on. It's available to everyone around me. Now let's share something like a photo. So I'll click on this, click on Share, click on nearby share and it'll look for a nearby device for me and it has this little prompt on the other Android device that has it enabled. It'll show up here. Click on that icon right over there. I'll accept it and there you go. Open it up in photos and there's that photo. If you have some documents that you need to scan or send to someone or store digitally, the camera app has a native document scanner built into it that auto detects documents. You can even resize things if it doesn't get perfect, but overall it works so well. If you have some sensitive information or files on your phone and you wanna have an extra layer of protection so someone can't just snoop around or accidentally stumble on and find something you don't want them to see, this is a really great feature. Go to your settings, type in secure folder, tap on that and you have this option here to enable it right here. You have to go through some options here or some steps here, and then it'll create this encrypted secure folder. Once it's been created, it can ask you what kind of lock type you wanna have for it. So maybe you wanna set up a pin, and this is an option that you can choose that has a different pin from your global pin password. Now here's the secure folder, and so you can put your pictures and your contacts and things in there. So now no one can go to your gallery unless they go to your secure folder. Now you can also manually lock it and exit it. So what happens, it's locked, and when you click on it, 
it'll ask for your pin number. And then now you're back into it. Autocorrect is a great feature to have. And strangely, it's not enabled in every app on the Samsung Galaxy S22 series. <laughs> Thankfully, you can fix it and easily select the option to apply autocorrect to everything. When you have your keyboard up, go ahead and click on the settings here, and then you can click on suggested text corrections. Here you click on manage apps, and it'll show you all the apps that's enabled for, but some of them aren't enabled, which is weird. So just click on all available apps, and that's it autocorrect everywhere. Have you ever fumbled around with your phone trying to take a screenshot with the right button combination and with your hands full or in, in an awkward position? Well, there's a super easy way to take a screenshot on your phone that is shockingly simple and completely not obvious. All you have to do is get your hand and your palm and just swipe it across and then it takes a screenshot just like that. What if I told you the simple, inexpensive little sticker could unlock hundreds and hundreds of different features on your phone with a simple tap? This is an NFC sticker, and all you have to do is download the NFC Tasks app and the NFC Tools app. With this NFC sticker, you can control a bunch of different settings or launch routines you want to perform, apps you want to launch, messages, web pages, images, and more. A simple tap of this sticker is great for whatever you want it to do. Maybe you tap on it before you go to bed and goes into do not disturb mode, or if you're like me, you can have it toggle on and off the flashlight. This is one of the many accessories I have in my accessories video for the Samsung Galaxy S22 series. There's a link to that video down in the description. And if that video is not ready by the time you're watching this video, I'll update it once I post it. But for now, you can see a video on the previous Galaxy series. One of the unfortunate things about Samsung phones is that there are often some extra apps or duplicate apps that are on your phone that clutter things up and you can't install them, but you can hide them. So what you can do is go to your home screen on your device, tap and hold anywhere on the screen and tap on the home screen settings. Scroll down and tap on hide apps. Now you can scroll through all the different options of the apps that you don't want to have. So maybe if you have this TV app that's the same thing two times over, you can just hide that. Or maybe it's uh, something else like smart switch that you don't want anymore. You can hit done. And then now when you go to your app screen, you won't see that anymore. There are two things that are a bit unusual about the Samsung Galaxy S22's power key. Holding it down activates Bixby, which isn't as good as the Google Assistant. No. No, no, no. And most annoyingly so, it doesn't act like a power key. So turning your phone off requires you to navigate through the software to go here to turn it off. Well, since we're already here, go ahead and click on side key settings. You can change it so it goes to the power off menu. And if you want to change it from automatically quick launching the camera, you can choose a specific app that it opens, which is really cool. Here's a tip that I hope you never have to use, but if you ever end up in a dangerous situation, you can automatically call someone, send a message, include pictures, and an audio recording quickly using SOS messages. Go to your settings and just type in SOS and send SOS message. Just enable that here. So let's hit continue. So there are a few things that you have to do to set things up. It'll of course ask you who you want to send it to. So I've chosen myself. And then it'll ask you how many times you need to hit the side key in order to activate it. I personally want to use it four times because it's a little bit too close to two times to activate the camera. Here you can change it to auto call someone, attach pictures, and attach an auto recording. So if I hit it four times, it'll say sending SOS message soon, and it'll have a countdown, and it'll send some messages to my other phone. So you can see it's recording some audio, and I get this message here, SOS. So you can see all the photos it's taking, an audio clip, and then where I'm located. And then when you're all okay, you can just stop sharing the location. If you ever end up in a situation where you need to disable all biometric unlocks like the fingerprint scanner and smart locks so that the only way someone can get into your phone is through a pin or password, you can enable lockdown mode. So go to your settings, search for lockdown, show lockdown options. It'll ask for your pin number, so it's whatever you set up when you set up your phone, not mine. And then you'll see this option that says show lockdown option. Click on that. And so what happens now is when you go to the lock screen, you have this lockdown mode right here. So you click on that, it goes into lockdown mode here. When I go to unlock it, I swipe up to unlock. It doesn't give me even the option to use my fingerprint for logging in. You have to use the pin that I set up. If you ever lose your phone, there are a variety of things you can do like remote unlock your phone, get your last location recorded via Find My Mobile, but that isn't too special. Go to your settings, search for Find My Mobile. 
click on that. So you have all these settings I mentioned earlier, remote unlock, send last location, but you also have offline finding. This allows it to be located even if it's offline. So like if maybe someone steals your phone, they can try to put it in airplane mode, but this find my mobile will still work. This is based upon other Samsung devices and it helps it relay its location, just like their smart tag trackers. If you've ever opened up your camera app on the Samsung Galaxy S22 and you went in to take a video, but you realize you're in the photo mode, you can easily go into photo mode and take video at the same time and then stay on the video mode by clicking, holding and dragging up just like that. On top of that, you can also take a photo at the same time. If you're the vlogging type and you're trying to make something like a YouTube video, you can actually record from both the front and back cameras, record a video with a picture in picture format while being able to see and control which cameras are being used on the back. It's pretty wild and really cool to be able to switch between all these lenses, making the recording and commentary of a video at the same time really convenient and fast. With the launch of the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, you're able to take advantage of this really neat feature called auto framing, which is something that you would see in something like an iPad Pro. So all I have to do is enable it and then hit record and it should move around and frame things for you. Recently, Google has blown a lot of people's minds with their magic eraser tool, but this feature has been on Samsung phones for a bit, and many have not really known about it, and it's called Object Eraser. Did you know that you can customize the volume rocker to do certain things in the camera app on the Samsung Galaxy S22? All you have to do is go to your settings, and then click on shooting methods, and then press volume keys to either take a picture or record video, zoom in and out, control system volume. So let's try zoom in and out, and I can zoom in. Oh my goodness. This tip is super convenient if you need to take a selfie or you don't have a friend around to take a photo for you, you can take a photo just with the palm of your hand. Bring it up and hold your palm up. I go into that and it works with the photo. And if you're in video, you can just go like this. And now we're recording a video, pretty convenient. One of the best things about the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra is the inclusion of the S Pen. So here are the tips and tricks for the S Pen in particular. And if you don't care about the S Pen or you don't have a phone that uses an S Pen, feel free to use the chapters to skip to the last tip that applies to all models. A major plus about having the S Pen on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra is taking photos easily with the S Pen, which is great if you just set up your phone for a selfie or you just hold it up and you just take a picture. All with a little button, super easy. Did you know you can do some Harry Potter tricks with your Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and the S Pen? With the S Pen, you can do air actions. So I can change which camera it's on, can change what setting it's on, and control all these different things just with the S Pen and just take a picture. What do you think the spell should be called for? air actions on the S Pen, <laughs> you know, let me know in the comments. The last thing you want to do is lose the S Pen on your Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. Thankfully, there's a pen proximity alert feature that will alert you if you forget to put your pen back in the slot when you walk away. So all you have to do is go to the settings, go all the way to the bottom and enable the option to warn if S Pen is left behind. So if you happen to forget your S Pen and you walk away from it, it'll give you an alert. Did you know that you can unlock your Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra with your S Pen? Well, you can, just go to your settings and enable S Pen Unlock. It'll ask for your pin number. This is your pin number that you set up, not my pin number. I don't know your pin number. <laughs> the thing is, it only really makes sense if you don't wanna have any security unlocks on, which is a bad idea, because when you click on it, it asks for your pin number or your biometric unlock. But if you don't care about having security, it's there for you for convenience. If you've ever downloaded a PDF, like a menu or some recipe instructions, the text is often insanely small. With the S Pen, you can actually enable this shortcut feature that allows you to magnify things a little bit more. So all you have to do is click over here and then add the option for magnify. Now it's over here. We'll go back and now we'll choose magnify. And now you can hover over things and see a little bit more. And up here you have the option of changing with the zoom level. And so now I can read this recipe a lot easier. If you ever wanted to have an app available and off to the side that you can quickly glance at and have it automatically hide itself, you can enable the glance feature for the S Pen on your Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. So what you wanna do is have the app that you want open. So let's just say it's YouTube and we'll go to my account. And then what we'll do is choose the glance option. We'll add it over here. Glance, there we go. And now we'll say glance. So if you just wanna quickly glance at it, you can just do it like that. And if you wanna drag it away, 
just go to remove and that's it. If you ever write out a note on the S Pen on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and you want to convert it to normal text, this is how you do it. So what you'll have to do is you'll go to the notes, create a note and just write something out. So I'll say, please subscribe. A little messy, let's see if it'll figure it out. So you just tap and hold down and tap on convert to text. It got right, convert. And there it is. And yes, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when I post a new video. If you ever want to take a screenshot and then annotate it by writing on it, you can easily do that with the S Pen using the screen write feature. So all I have to do is go into the S Pen settings and then select screen write. I'll take a screenshot of what's here and you can change different kind of brushes and colors that you have here. So let's just choose this. And then I can just write things around here. And that's not the right color. And you can just annotate things like, here you go. There's the search bar. One of my favorite things about having a Samsung Galaxy device with an S Pen is how insanely easy it is to create your own custom GIFs on the go. So I have this YouTube video up here. So you go into the S Pen features here and choose Smart Select, and I'll just choose the GIF option, and it'll automatically select the video area of this video. You can choose high quality, standard quality, we'll go with high quality, and just hit record. And it's gonna record this, and it'll tell you how much storage size it is, how many frames it is. You can go up to 15 seconds and you hit stop, and then now you have an animated GIF just like that. And you can download it and post it somewhere else. This is really great, especially if you're a content creator and you wanna post a GIF for a community post or something on Twitter. Now, many of you have probably noticed that I have not used the built-in screen recorder on my Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. And it is convenient and it's there, it's built in, but I use AZ Screen Recorder. Here's why. I have the option to adjust the resolution, the bit rate, I can have a custom frame rate, I can lock the orientation to what I want, see that what the audio source is. You can just do so much here that is a little bit more granular than using the built-in screen recorder. And that's especially important for videos like this. So do you have any other tips that you think would be helpful for the Samsung Galaxy S22 series? Go ahead and leave some comments down below and don't forget to join the This Is Tech Today community discord chat server. We'd really love to have you there. Thanks for watching This Is Tech Today. Until next time.